I am very excited and lucky to be joined at Fortress Melbourne with Gavin Verhe, who's the principal designer and manager of the gathering. Gavin, how are you finding Australia? I love it. I always love coming here. Australia is a blast. I wish it wasn't 24 hours of flying away or I'd come a lot more often. But it's great. People are great. The food's great. The culture's great. Right now, we're in one of my favorite cities in the world. So I can't complain too much. It's been a great trip. I'm glad to hear that. Now, can you tell me a little bit about your role at Wizard of the Coast and what you do with Magic the Gathering? Yeah, so I'm a principal game designer on Magic. So my primary job is to come up with new Magic cards. So I focus on designing the abilities, not so much the art, although I did draw two pieces of Magic art, uh, but I don't really do the art. I mostly um, you know, do the abilities and the mana costs and the power toughness, that kind of thing. But um, in addition to that, I'm like a very front-facing person for Magic. So I do a lot of traveling around to events, um, signings, panels, that kind of thing, have a strong social media presence, and have a YouTube channel called Good Morning Magic that three days a week I put um, behind-the-scenes design information up on. So I really like to keep a good connection with the community as like a former pro player turned Magic designer. I, I guess when you talk about designing Magic, you have to think of the game as a whole. Like it's you know, a 30-year-old game that you have people playing in many different ways. Is there a challenge in honoring that sort of the legacy of the game and also trying to make it fresh and new and exciting? Yeah, one of the biggest challenges with designing Magic is, in fact, exactly that, right? One of its greatest advantages is it's been around for 30 years. Also, one thing that can make it very tricky is it's been around for 30 years. So you, every card you make, you have to think about all the old interactions, how it's going to fall in to the place. There are some older cards, which means you can't do th new things, right? So. You also want to make sure that, hey, these cards are exciting. You want to go get them. You want to try them. It's new. It's novel. What is something players have never seen before? And so with every set, we're like, oh, what is the, the twist? What is the thing that they haven't done before? And with the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, we're going to a world that we've been to before, but with the twist of going underground, which players have asked for an underground set for ages, and we're finally delivering on that here with this set. So I, I guess revisiting planes or worlds is a chance to, one, go back to you know, areas or mechanics or themes that players love, or that you know, Wizards loves, uh, but then give it, yeah, as you're saying, a new twist. Is there a challenge though to try and make it fresh every time? Yeah, well, it's, when you go back to a world in particular, you want to make sure it has some old and some new, right? Because if you go back to a world and it's all new, it's like, why go back in the first place? You're kind of not making it what that player, uh, what someone wants. But if it's all the old stuff, well, then where's the newness? Where's the thing to get excited about? And, uh, you know, there's some previous blocks where we've messed it up on both sides. So with Lost Caverns of Ixalan, it's a great blending of the two. You have the underground world. You have the crafting stuff. You have things that are a little bit different than the first time we went around. On the flip side, you still got dinosaurs. You still got merfolk. You still got pirates. You still got vampires hanging out. You have Explore as a returning mechanic that was in the previous Ixalan. So it really does feel like an authentic sequel to that world. And one thing that I really love is not just in mechanics, but in the flavor of the world too, in the setting itself. If you go back and read some of the flavor text of the original Ixalan set or some of the lore, you'll see some things that hint actually at what we see here. For example, uh, Akalots, which is uh, this bat god, is in the flavor text in the original Ixalan block and now shows up here as they go underground. So there's some little things like that that really make it feel like a whole connected world, which I appreciate. One of the great things we've got for Lost Caverns of Ixalan is we've got, you know, as you said, dinosaurs and we've got uh, Universe Beyond crossover with Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. You've also managed to do that a number of times recently, including with a Doctor Who set. What is it like playing in those different worlds, different IPs? Obviously something that you're probably have very fond memories of. Well, it's, it's, it's huge for me, and it's so exciting. I mean, you know, for me, for reference, I'll talk about Doctor Who for a second. That's my favorite show. So when they came to me and said, hey, you're going to work on a Doctor Who set, I actually, I laughed. I thought it was a joke. It was a practical joke on me, right? That's how excited I was um, because I did not believe it could be real. Um, so we ended up work with the BBC on that set and crafting that set from the ground up, making all the cards come to life was an amazing experience. And one thing we've found, whether it's The Lord of the Rings, Doctor Who, Jurassic World, it taps into a design vein we don't normally have. We come up with ideas for cards based on characters that players know and love that we would have never come up with otherwise, right? Look at a card like River Song, which is in uh, the Doctor Who Commander decks. If you don't know her, River's a character. That, the long and short of it is basically she travels in an opposite time direction from the Doctor. And so the card lets you draw from the bottom of your deck, which is a very novel mechanic, something that we probably wouldn't have done if it wasn't a great fit for the character. And so. Being able to tap into those design riches and resources of these top-down ideas and make you feel like you really captured the character on a new commander or a new card you get to play with is a really special experience. 
That sounds like it's, it's thematically exciting for you to design those cars, but it also is your opportunity to sort of flex your design muscles a different way to make sure you're really hitting the mark for those characters as well. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's both very exciting. I mean, as a huge Doctor Who fan, like getting to design a bunch of Doctor Who cards, you're kidding, that was amazing. It's also, you feel this almost, this huge weight on you because you want to do it right. Like, if you're a fan of the property and you're going to have a lot of people out there who are fans of the property, you want to make sure you do these characters right by them. You do them in a way where they feel correct and authentic, like they really are getting out what, what you're going for. And, um, you know, we like to pick designers for sets that know the IP really well. So, like, I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. Annie Sardellis was the lead for our Fallout decks that are coming out early next year. And she's a huge Fallout fan. So, finding people that know the source material and they're able to like, put in the reps, be like, that's not quite right. We got to tweak it a little further to make sure it feels like an authentic representation of the world and of the characters is really important to us. So we've got a whole bunch of people loving uh, Lost Caverns of Ixalan, the commander decks here tonight at Fortress. Uh, you know, Christmas is coming, 2024 is coming. Can you tell me a little bit about what you've already announced for, for Magic Sets? next year yeah for our so, so our, our four big sets next year our four like tentpole like magic world releases uh, i'm excited about all of them in different ways right we start off with murders at karlov manor which is like a murder mystery set it's it's magic meets clue in fact it's so magic meets clue we actually have a clue piece of it that comes out alongside it which is pretty cool we actually get to like play clue and magic alongside each other it's quite fun um, and that's really going to tap into that kind of a bit of nostalgia. A bit. There's a lot of also present day shows people are enjoying that have murder mysteries in them, and make you try and figure out who did it. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of really fun stuff happening in that set, and I can't wait for you to see what's going on there. Just fun fact in Australia, it's Cluedo. Oh, Cluedo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. The, the British, British, uh, Australia yeah. version Cluedo. But yes, Cluedo. Yeah. Get ready. <laughs> Uh, then, of course, we've got Outlaws at Thunder Junction, which is our take on frontier fantasy, right? Like, yeehaw, giddy up. It's really fun. And there's a bit of um, a villainous twist on it, too, which is a really good time, because who wants to be the good guy in, in a set like that, right? Um, we've got, of course, Bloomboro, which I'm really excited about. It's like fun, furry little creatures. If you love mice and, you know, uh, otters and all kinds of different cute animals, there's a lot of just various cute animals in that set for you. And then uh, Dusk Morn coming out at the end of the year. So you, we've seen Innistrad before, which is like um, Victorian horror, vampires, zombies, werewolves. Dusk Morn is a um, more take on modern horror. So imagine like um, sort of Stranger Things vibe, and that's what you can expect to find in that set. Um, so I'm excited for you all to see all of those. And then of course, while not a standard legal set, we do have Modern Horizons 3 coming in the year, which is going to be huge for all kinds of players. I think there's going to be uh, something for every player. Uh, I'm yeah keen to see, but all I'm seeing is the Cluedo, Cluedo, uh, yeah. uh, you know, mix up. Like uh, that's a board game that sort of withstands the, the test of time. Maybe Monopoly doesn't. Uh, and I'm excited to see yeah w what Magic is going to do, how One Horizon Three is going to shake up some formats. Gavin, thank you very much for chatting to us today. Oh, it's been my pleasure. And really, thanks to all of you out here in Australia. You know, like, Magic would be nothing without the great players around the world. And everywhere I go, I get to meet really awesome Magic players. So I'm so thankful for the warm reception. And I really hope you, hope, I really hope you enjoy not only Lost Caverns of Ixalan and the summer of Magic that's happening right now, but also all the sets next year. It's going to be a blast. <laughs>